My dream was always to be an entrepreneur. Um, I had worked in corporate Trinidad. I was the internal communications manager at the Ministry of Health. But I felt like that couldn't be it for me. Like I, there was more. And I'm also, you know, I love my culture. I love my country and I love people. So I felt like I needed to marry all of those elements of myself, as well as me being a creative, into something. Because I feel like if you do a job you love, you never work a day in your life. And so, well, this is it. This is a culmination of me being a creative. So I'm around my work and other creatives' work. It's me giving back to my culture because it's... When you think about Trinidad and Tobago, it's one of the most creative countries in the world. What do you think? Mass and Carnival and Calypso alone? No, there are people like us who make candles and jewelry. We're also part of the creative explosion that exists in Trinidad and Tobago. And I wanted to be at the beginning of that journey so that people could start to see that, see that we're more than just Mass and Calypso and soca music, but that going back to our four parents making things with their hands. So I'd like to celebrate that. And I feel like that's what I, my, my business is supposed to do. I hope that's when people come in, that's their experience. They, and it is, most people say, oh my God, I didn't know all these things were made in Trinidad and Tobago. People can make them thing in Trinidad. And I feel like just hearing that sometimes is enough. Not more than money, but close. <laughs> And my pride and joy is the books by local authors. Like we have so many local authors in Trinidad and Tobago. I wish I could sing their phrases high enough so that people could understand. Like I had two most satisfying moments. My first is when John Barry launched his books, the finalists. I had the whole clip of some fraternity, pan fraternity in my store. That time I was in Marbella. And they were just, they knew the work. They could have conversations about the work. The mayor came and he is really um, Junior Reguelo, a great pan man. So he was able to tell the stories. And everybody was saying, it's long overdue that we don't have a book like this in Trinidad. I mean, it hasn't really been that necessarily all of them have bought the book, but I was able to have this whole fraternity of people, people I admired since my childhood in my store talking about culture and carnival and pan and calypso music and that to me was a high point it looks at everybody who's ever won the calypso monarch or soca monarch competition from the inception to 2017. it is a graphical review and it looks at like if you're looking for somebody by their name if you're looking for them by their year if you're looking anything it actually you know what i learned from this book that um you know people the, the groovy soca monarch only lasted x amount of years i think it was 10 years because during the duration of this book it wasn't in the original book book one it didn't make book one but it made book two and but by the time the end of book two came out groovy soca monarch was no more no longer a thing you know and um just so, and you learn so much about Calypso history, which is nowhere in these schools, it's not in our education system, but guess what, a Trinidadian, who was a great filmmaker in the US, came back home to chronicle the work of our Calypso artists and our soca artists in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, you can't put a dollar value on that. Then you have people like Jonathan Kamabach, who is a very renowned human resource manager. He, I mean, he works at UTT right now, but this is Jonathan Kamabas bearing his soul in a book of poetry called Primary Colors. Never sought or chosen, but we fell in with each other and each other. Some spots cold and some ever warm, yet. May we ever recur to talk backwards and forwards, sometimes over a few drinks, with a few laughs, FaceTimes and texts through our children, and ever between the miles, ever across the years. Those early wars were more preparation, as this world rips its script into ever finer bits, looking almost nothing like them. Almost. The poems are so deep, they're so interesting, but you know, it makes me, whenever somebody says, I write poetry, but I don't know if I'm good enough, I say, you know, you need to read this because once it comes from the heart, it's simple enough and profound enough to get anybody excited. 
We directed Fate, this by Akini Harry. I don't know if you know this story, but I, I, I want all young boys to get access to this book. This is a young man who went presentation college, but got in trouble because after school, he um, got into a life of crime. Not really, but he was arrested and he got in trouble with the law. But today, he's finishing his master's in criminology and helping other young boys redirect their fate. And the book looks at how parents, teachers, educators, everybody is a part of the process that turns a child towards crime or against crime or what direction a child takes. Fantastic book for everybody to experience. Lance Dorridge. This is a very funny, funny, funny collection of short stories. But it, it, it like it, you could be from anywhere in Trinidad, you would be able to relate to the characters in this book. It's a book about us and our life and how we live as Trinidadians. You know, I mean, I could literally go through every book here and tell you why somebody is supposed to buy those books. Best Care Essence, a tiny little book that tells a huge story about how women in Trinidad and Tobago need to take care of their breasts. And you know, the things that we don't know about what causes us to have breast cancer and unhealthy breast experiences. Like according to this book, 90% 90, 90 of the women who suffer from breast cancer really suffer from heart experiences with a man. So you may have had a broken heart, been in an abusive relationship. Even if the man may have been your father, your brother, your spouse, your boyfriend, just relationships, male-female relationships, how they contribute to women having breast cancer. Little things, what to eat. This is Trini Christmas Alphabet. This was written by a dear friend of mine. Her name is Dana James Edwards. She is a Trinidadian who lives in London and I have to give props to Trinidadians who still fly the flag of our culture high. She could not come home to Trinidad and she had twin boys and she wanted them to know what a Trini Christmas is. So she created a whole book, a whole book on everything a Trini Christmas alphabet that they would ever need to know about a Trini Christmas what a Trini Christmas is so and every time I go on social media or anywhere I am amazed at how many authors new authors come out of Trinidad and Tobago and they're not celebrated enough so I wanted to be a space where eventually anybody would come if you're looking for a book from a local author well this is the place to come and to find that kind of thing somebody from abroad you want to read you want to read how locals how locals exist whatever come here and get that kind of experience so that was my thinking my second high point is Naruki Ato Osei is a Calypsonian he's like a national treasure but he had an art exhibition in my store I learned from Naruki what I would have never learned like in any textbook his paintings were from $20,000 down, right? But he, he had like $600 paintings and he had $20,000 paintings. And he used his public relations skills. He used to be the PRO of um, Tuco at one point. So he used his public relations skills and he was in the papers. People were literally buying his paintings off of the, out, off of the papers. They were seeing the pictures in the papers and they were calling and saying, I need to get this. But he, he was, he was, he was selling $600 pieces too. So a man from the street walking down the road with a nice piece of painting and he could afford it. And I found that he understood what you needed to do to take art to the next level in Trinidad. There, yes, you could sell art for only the rich, but the poor deserve art too. So for me, the highlight of my work is just interacting with my culture, being a part of the culture, having cultural icons and people in the store and just being a part of, you know, that's what I want to be. I want to be celebrate. I want us to celebrate who we are, Trinidadians, and that's the kind of energy I want to always emanate. You know, come out from my store. Yeah. yeah.